Mulch, a topic in gardening that many of us can gloss over. In fact, when I first started out, I totally ignored it. I was an apartment gardener, it just wasn't on my radar. Now it is certainly on my radar. And today we are gonna be talking about seven different ways that you can get mulch and use it effectively in your garden for nearly free or extremely low cost. What's up guys, Kevin from Epic Gardening here. And before we get into method number one, I am going to talk a little bit about general mulch principles. Principles of mulch. Okay, so you want something that is made of organic matter in a perfect world. None of these chopped up rubber tires, etc. Not good for the gardening applications that we're looking for. You want something that is fine to medium grained, not extremely coarse in my experience because it just won't break down quick enough. So massive pieces of bark, usually not a very good idea there. You're going to want something that is heavy enough to stay put if you have any wind or any sort of storm, etc. So I have purposefully excluded things like shredded newspaper because I find it's just a little bit too airy to use as mulch in a really effective way. And certainly I'm sure you could, but this is my experience. You're gonna want something that preferably you can get in bulk or you can source in bulk from non-bagged material just because it's less wasteful and also more cost effective. And then finally, you want something that's not going to pollute your garden with herbicides, pesticides, weed seeds, all that fun stuff, or not fun stuff, that will mess up your garden and kind of negate the purpose of getting that mulch in the first place. Free mulch source number one, big ol' straw bales. So straw first came on my radar when I read the book, The Ruth Stout No Work Garden. So she was an elderly woman who spent almost no time managing her garden Actually, I think she gardened naked sometimes. Hilarious woman, you can check her YouTube videos out from old documentaries that they filmed, but she was a huge proponent of straw mulch. In fact, I think she used hay. I would caution against using hay just because the way hay is harvested, it's more prone to having weed seeds in it. So if you go with straw, which is just the bare stalk, then you're gonna be in a better spot. I actually sourced my straw off of Craigslist for $8 per bale, which is actually, from what I've heard, relatively expensive. A lot of my friends who live in more rural areas where straw is more readily available will pay two to three dollars a bale, which is so cheap that I personally consider that close to free. So straw is a fantastic, fantastic mulch. And in fact, you can grow things like potatoes in just straw. You can drop potatoes right on the ground and then you can just put maybe six to eight inches of straw on top and just let that go and you're gonna get a nice healthy batch of potatoes. In fact, that's what the Roost Out did all the time. So again, straw, fantastic mulch. I find that unless you lay it down relatively thick, it can blow away a little bit. So just be careful of that and make sure that you lay it down kind of thick, but don't lay it down so thick that it starts to mat and kind of clump together. So if I was to lay this chunk down right here, for example, I wouldn't just put this right on top. I would break it up and then put it on top so there's a little aeration in between all these different bits of straw here. Method number two is using a chipper shredder. So if you have a lot of organic matter, like this bougainvillea behind me, or as my Filipino grandma calls it, a bougainvillea, shout out to all you Filipinos out there, you can go ahead and just break that down once you do some pruning. So I've done this to a loquat tree out of my front yard. When I prune those branches off, they go through the chipper shredder, the bougainvillea, the ficus, all these things in my backyard that I need to prune end up going through the chipper shredder and they get mulched out and they're in these nice sort of medium heavy chunks that I can go ahead and just lay down on top of my bare soil or on top of my beds anywhere that I want. And that's a completely free input provided you get the chipper shredder, which I got on Craigslist for 20 to $30. And I also have a complete breakdown of chipper shredders on my website, which I will leave in the description and in the little cards up here. Our third free mulch tip takes us to the internet. I just want to show you guys. So this is the Miramar Greenery, which is the city of San Diego's landfill where they produce green waste products. So you might think, okay, landfill doesn't sound so promising, but you know, they do have a nice green waste program, at least in my city and in many municipalities, you can get it for free as long as you're a resident of the city. So as long as you can prove that, then you can go and load it up. So I'll show you just a second here what we have. They've got mulch, wood chips, and compost products. So we're talking about mulch in today's video. So it says, the greenery mulch is made by a shortened 15-day composting process using shredding tree and yard trimmings. And what they'll do is they will go ahead and gather the trimmings, they'll grind them up, they have a windrow turner, they put water on them, they heat them up to 165, which is crucial because that's killing your weed seeds and your pathogens. Above 160 is usually a good idea. And then they're left in the windrows. 
until they are picked up by someone like you or someone like me. Now that is a great, great service, extremely cheap, and you can load up as much as you want, provided that you're a resident again and you can load it up yourself. You have the, the gear to load it up, maybe a friend. And they also have wood chips. You may find that this is the same at your local municipality. I would very much caution against using these colored products, the browns or the reds. I would just go with the plain wood chips or the natural wood chips. Those are the ones that I would pick just because I don't really need any coloration on my I, my wood. It's just not something that I really care about. But that is a really good resource that I don't think enough people pay attention to. Our fourth option still has this behind the computer. We're talking about chip drop because we just talked about wood chips. So why not just get a bunch of wood chips for free, right? Sounds amazing. This is a service that pairs arborists with gardeners and helps both of them get their needs met, right? Arborists don't want to go to the dump and pay a dumping fee. Why not just dump it at a house somewhere near the project that they just worked on? Makes sense, right? Well, you do have to be careful when you're using chip drop. In fact, you have to be so careful. And there's been so many issues that people have mismatched expectations with using it that the founders of chip drop made this video. I'm going to play just a little clip for you right here. You have it. No notice, tons of chips, and you might have to wait forever. Chip drop is a real hassle unless you're like these folks. And if so the way that it works is the art as soon as you sign up, you can specify a couple different things. You can specify, you know, what type of do you want logs? Do you not want logs? You can do that kind of stuff. You cannot say how much you want. You can't say where you want it per se. You can say I don't want it on the driveway or I do want it on the driveway. Um, but you can't say like, please bring it to the backyard. And you cannot uh, say exactly when you want it, right? So that is the tricky part about it. And you can get a lot. I mean, the, the lowest amount you'll ever get is about three yards of wood chips. You can get up to 15 yards depending on the job. And so I would just very much caution using this unless you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Because you can see how big is a chip drop? As much as 20 cubic yards could be as little as four yards. You can see kind of how they show up on your property doesn't look that great. A, a lot of times neighbors will band together and they'll, they'll get a chip drop and then they'll all use it for their free mulch. That can be a really good idea. Uh, look, what's allowed in a chip drop? This is a really good one. 50% wood chips, 50% green leafy material. Then you've got some sticks and then there is sometimes some trash in there which you might have to sort out. Not usually a lot, but sometimes there is some. And then it says, what's not allowed in a chip drop? You are not gonna get logs unless you request them. You're not going to get a ton of garbage. You're not gonna get large rocks. You're not going to get any wood species that you don't want, which is a really good thing for gardeners and, and mulch especially. And you're not going to get just like junk, right? So again, it's a service. It's out there. You just have to be careful. I definitely got extremely surprised when I used it the first time because I made all these mistakes and I got way too many wood chips. I had to figure out how to get rid of them. So just be careful, but it is a free source of mulch. Our next source of mulch is pine needles. This is something I talked about in my five garden myths video and basically dispelling the idea that they're too acidic to use as a mulch or as a composted fertilizer, etc. It's just not true. Fresh pine needles do have a pH of around 3.5, but none of us are taking a bunch of fresh pine needles and burying them in the ground where they would actually have a negative effect. And then a lot of people will say, okay, well, what about the dead ring around pine trees? Isn't that indicative of the fact that they are too acidic? Not really, because what do pine needles do when they're collected in one spot somewhat thick almost like a mulch, they smother, right? And so what they're doing is they're smothering the grass beneath or the vegetation beneath. They are not killing it due to the acidity. And so just not true, but they are a fantastic source of mulch. And so you can use them maybe two, three, four inches deep and they don't mat. They are nice and sort of spongy. They'll break down relatively quickly and they're just abundant, at least if you're in an area that actually has a bunch of pine trees. So you can go to your neighbor, rake them up, and just kind of leave them on your garden and you're in a really good spot for free nutritious mulch for your garden. Tip number six is something I don't have in my garden, which is grass clippings. Grass clippings are a fantastic source of mulch for the garden. You can find them almost anywhere. Of course, if you have a lawn, just use your own. But if you don't, I'm sure your neighbors are not gonna be too sad about you saying, hey, do you mind if I just take your grass from you? Do you mind if I just grab your grass clippings? Hey, maybe even if you have a child, have them mow the lawn for your neighbor. The neighbor will pay them and then they will get the grass clippings for free. So you can get paid to get grass clippings as mulch, or at least your child can, or you can if you wanna start a little lawn mowing business. Anyways, I digress. What we're talking about here is 
the the benefits, right? So you can add a decent amount of nitrogen back to your soil over time as that those grass clippings break down. At the same time, uh, if you're using them fresh, you do wanna make sure that you don't put too much, maybe a quarter inch to a half inch because they have a tendency to mat down, suffocate the soil, and they can also start to rot and smell bad. If you let them dry, you can add a lot more. So maybe like two to four inches, that's completely fine. The only thing to consider there is they might start to blow around in the wind and maybe you might even wanna mix them with some of the other inputs that we've talked about in this video to get a little more heft to them so they actually stay down. So that's what I would say. Grass clippings, fantastic source of mulch. Our seventh and our final tip is autumn leaves. What a fantastic source of mulch and nutrition for your soil. It's again like the pine needles. You're gonna go to your neighbors, knock on their door and say, oh, hey, Sally, uh, do you mind if I come and rake your leaves for you and then take them away? And Sally's gonna say, uh, yeah, I think so. And how much do I owe you? And you say, oh, actually the leaves are the payment. And they're gonna look at you, especially if they're not a gardener and go, what? is wrong with you but you'll know there's actually something wrong with them because autumn leaves are so fantastic so what you have to consider with them it's very similar to the grass clippings you don't want to mat them like crazy and before you go ahead and spread them out as mulch there's two things you can do one you must do second is an option for you the first thing you must do is throw them through like a mulching lawnmower or a shredder because you don't want them to mat up I mean if I have this leaf here and this leaf here imagine you have a bunch of these well they're gonna sit kind of like this they're not gonna be per they're not gonna like be nice and fluffy they're gonna mat up that's what they are structurally designed to do and that's not a good thing it's the same problem as the grass clippings right so throw them through a chopper as soon as you do something like this with them and then they lay down they're gonna lay in a more uneven pattern with more airflow within them so it's just a smarter idea so that's what I would say for that. The second thing you can do is you can make leaf mold with them, which is another topic. I'm gonna to make another video on that in the future, but that is one other thing that you can do. Well, that's it guys. Seven different ways that you can source mulch for your garden, either free or exceptionally cheap, depending on your preferences, right? How you like to spend your money and how you like to spend your time. If you're wondering what this little guy is, or big guy, it's two foot by six foot. These are all the beds that I have in my front yard. I actually now distribute them here in America. So. I went a little crazy because I'm so obsessed with these beds and I love them so much and I bought an entire shipping container of them and I'm now selling them in America because previously they were only available in Australia and the UK and I was one of the few gardeners here in America that actually had them. So if you'd like, you can always check those out at shopthatatbiggardening.com but if not, I hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck in the garden, keep growing and I will see you on the next one. What a sexy looking raised bed, if I do say so myself. This is going to be a new herb garden.